Before we start today's story, I just want to say this. This is my first ever pasta that I've ever written, and it's in memory of my late father. I know he's proud I found my niche. So, thank you for the support, and enjoy. I awake in a cold sweat. My body trembles as I'm freezing, but I'm not. Ever since I lost my dad six years ago, this is normal. Well, to be honest, it's from my drinking. When he passed, I drank every day. Two to three six-packs a day, and some Evan Williams to top it off. I've been sober for almost two years now off alcohol. While it's been amazing and I love the life I live now, I wake up every three hours or so on the dot without fail. I'm not sure what causes this, but I do know this is how I know clipped. Simply rolled over in my bed thinking I would roll off and onto the floor. I was met with the surprise when I kept rolling. That's right, it's like my bed was infinite for a brief moment. All of a sudden, I smacked the floor. Finally. But this carpet is damp and it reeks so bad of a stench that my nose can't even decipher what it is. Yellow Masonic wallpaper as far as the eye could see. Doors and hallways everywhere. Am I... in the back rooms? Fuck. Good shit, man. Now what are you gonna do? I said to myself. I scrambled to my feet and left no time to waste. I sprint through the first door on my left. Already, within 30 seconds of being here, I'm staring at a face lane. Hunched over, facing me, no face, completely void of anything. I don't even feel a sense of life coming from it. Without it having a mouth, it somehow still manages to pierce my eardrums with a guttural screech. Without thinking, I turn around and choose the long hallway instead. Sprinting for like 45 minutes down this singular hallway with the same ugly ass yellow wallpaper. Finally, a path branches off to my right. I take it. I wish I hadn't. As I take this turn, there is nothing. Another 4x4 four four room. I hear the guttural screech catching up. I look and see no exit, except the long hallway that will lead me right into the hands of the facelink. Alright fucker, you need the no clip, I said to myself. I was right. I was either die here or at least try to get the fuck out of here. I break into a full sprint towards the wall. I close my eyes and I force everything, I mean everything, towards the middle of my brow. That's right, where your third eye is. I forced any and all energy I had in me and forced it there as I kept thinking anywhere but here, fucking anywhere but here. As I'm still running, I realize I should have smacked the wall, but I didn't. I feel air whoosh across my face. I open my eyes and what I see is breathtaking. It's a land completely void of life, no walls, windows, trees, etc. Nothing. I walk on what appears to be water. If you look down, it's trippy. It's infinite, yet you can see the bottom. Does that make sense? Of course not. I'm in the fucking back rooms. All of a sudden, the sky goes black, as well as the water underneath my feet. My heart sinks. I am terrified of deep, dark depths. The ground gives way like broken glass. Instantly, I am engulfed in darkness, and I was right. It was like water. I felt it in my lungs. I felt myself struggle for air. But I wasn't drowning. I was just suffocating for over 45 minutes. I was going to be trapped in a void, drowning for eternity. No, I said to myself. Then I repeated the same steps from before. I closed my eyes and forced all of my energy yet again to the front middle area of my brow. The air whooshes. I gasp for air. I can breathe again. I never thought I would say that, but I could breathe again. It was dark, but yet I could see everything, almost as if I had NVGs, night vision goggles, in my actual skull. I hear humming, rhythmic humming. The humming gets louder as I move down a Victorian looking street. Once again, it's pitch black, yet I can fucking see. I have zero clue how else to explain that. The humming now is right in front of me. It's coming from a woman hunched over something. Ma'am? I call out. Why the fuck did I just do that? She turned in a 180 with her head only. 
thick, chromosome-filled blood dripping from razor-sharp fangs. She bends back. You can hear the spine snap a bit. She is now on all fours reverse crab walking style. She lunges at me. I fall onto my back, putting up my feet to leverage her weight and send her flying behind me. I didn't even look to see what happened to her. I full sprinted yet again around a corner I had no clue where it would lead to. It was a market, filled with grotesque demons of all kinds if I had to guess. One was eating another one whole while the other one was asking to be eaten. I needed to get the fuck out of here. There was a dead end to my left. It was either stay here and possibly endure this forever or no clip the fuck out of here. I sprinted at the wall, full speed, doing the same exact ritual as before. Air whooshes. The smell of this air is familiar, but how? Jason, I hear a familiar voice call me. I turn and see my best friend from middle school, Melvin. What? What am I doing here? I asked him. What do you mean, fucker? You have to be here, dumbass. He replied jokingly. I try to keep my composure as I find the nearest mirror. I almost fainted when I saw my reflection. I was 14 again. Acne everywhere, brace faced and oily curled hair. I don't know how, but I must have no clipped back in time. Right? That can happen, right? I realize it's the final bell that rings. Seeing as Jim was my last class for B block, I sprint to what I know is the pickup spot for school, and I freeze. Time ceased to exist for a minute. Right before me, in his tank top tee, was my dad. Tattooed sleeves and all. My mom was with him too. I finally got my composure and sprinted to them both. I hugged them for what felt like three hours. I held them so tight and never wanted to let go. I hopped in the back seat. And we drove home. I'm not sure how I got here, but I do know it involved no clipping. And while I cannot tell you how to do it exactly, I can tell you that I did it and how I did it. I never want to no clip ever again. I have found my heaven, my nirvana, and I will fight, claw and no clip to the ends of this ethereal plane just to get back here. Time is relative, and it's also fleeting. So hug your mom, hug your dad. Hug the ones that you know. Inevitably, time will take from you. Thank you for listening to How to No Clip, written and narrated by me, Creepy Sauce. This is my first pasta I have ever written, I wrote this in memory of my dad. He was my best friend, and I know he would want me to do what makes me happy. I've wanted to do this for years, so thank you for the support in encouraging me to write one, let alone keep narrating. As long as you guys enjoy these narrations, I will not stop, and I will continue to improve and evolve. Creepy pastas are internet folklore. It's up to you to decide fact or fiction. I do these for entertainment purposes only. Watch at your own discretion. If you like creepy pastas and want to suggest more, leave them in the comments and I will read them and narrate and upload them. This is my 12th upload of many, so if you enjoy the short story or creepy pasta world, be sure to subscribe and turn the bell on because I will be uploading consistently, looking for all kinds of creepy stories to tell. I need your help with more stories and ideas to do. I need your opinions on what I can do to improve. But hey. This is Creepy Sauce, and thank you for listening to my story.